Are we online? Oh, yeah, we're online, buddy. Yeah, it's it's higher up. Yeah, hold on. I connect this to the. Yeah, we lost our people, but people will come in now. They got automatic. They should. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, that's better. Okay, we're good. It's recording. All right. Good evening, everyone. Service, Bruce Scott. Welcome to the official kickoff of Crypto Mondays. Vienna. Uh, so, uh, a little bit uh, about Crypto Mondays. Has anybody been to a Crypto Mondays event anywhere in our 70 or more plus cities around the world? All right, Jorgen's been. All right, other people? All right, so there's people traveling around. We have Crypto Mondays. Uh, this will be our 73rd city around the world where we do Crypto Mondays. We do Crypto Mondays regularly in 31 cities uh, around the world. We're building Europe. We're building Asia. Of course, we got a lot in the United States. Crypto Mondays is the world's oldest and largest meetups all around blockchain, crypto, DeFi, and now NFTs, <laughs> of course. And uh, we have inspiring projects on Crypto Mondays big projects, innovative projects, whether it's the uh, biggest innovative project in Austria, which is obviously the Belvedere of the Kiss, or even new startups that are, are unknown, things like Open Sea. Has anybody been on Open Sea? Right, so several have been on Open Sea, started on Crypto Mondays, Empire DAO, NFT NYC, many big, many crypto startups now, because we want to bring information, education, and let people know and have a great discussion about crypto. Who's ready for a great discussion tonight about NFTs? I am. <laughs> and, and, I, and I know that uh, sometimes you know, I have to tell Austrians to clap, but I don't have to do that tonight I'm, <laughs> because everybody here uh, is a global citizen, right? That's why you're Crypto Monday. So very excited to be here. Also like to say hello to our streaming audience. Uh, uh, there's several big Crypto Mondays happening today around the world. We have the VP of Circle. I don't know if anybody's heard of Circle. USD, USD coin, right? Anybody have USD? Anybody heard that? The VP of Circle is on Crypto Mondays in um, Stanford, Connecticut tonight, but I had dibs on the streaming. So <laughs> everybody who's watching out there in crypto land, uh, welcome. Uh, we I'm sorry about the technical delays, uh, but so what we're going to do based on the delays is we're just going to um, have our first panel tonight, which is uh, going to be amazing, uh, with uh, Jurgen Polso from RTQ and Wolfgang Bergman from Belvedere, of course, and then we will follow directly on with our legal panel and uh, have our uh, NFT uh, prize giveaway. Uh, tonight. So, uh, and we'll all do that, and then that will leave you plenty of time for networking, okay? So, we'll sit in here for like the next 40 minutes, but it's going to be exciting, okay? We're going to have fun, and if, if you're new to NFTs, if you're new to crypto, um, then you're going to learn something. If you're an expert, if you're an investor, if you're a technical person, then you're also going to learn something. We hope that everybody takes something away, and one person here is going to take away an official The Kiss NFT. We're going to make history tonight. We're going to make history as the first event where a famous, a piece of a famous artwork will actually be given away in the event. 
And that is the Kiss NFT, a very innovative project. So I'm super, super excited um, to have Crypto Mondays uh, and do this. I want to say thank you to uh, our sponsor, Arctic Q. You're going to learn about them tonight. A fascinating and very innovative uh, project created right here in Vienna. And uh, of course, thank you very much to the Belvedere for hosting us in this iconic location. The Crypto Mondays people around the world are so jealous of right now. They all want to be in Vienna, don't they? All right. But we are here and we're live. Okay. Ab absolutely. Just a few uh, things on this on the stage uh, or on the on the slide here. If you uh, are looking at um, any of the uh, information here, please take a picture and you can definitely follow up with any of these links. Um, and we uh, unfortunately are video and um, photographer um, had to cancel last minute. So I just just encourage you to take pictures um, of different, you know, of different people of the event, help us out. And if you put those up on social, here's some of the show tools. This is me. And then of course, Crypto Mondays, whether you're on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or wherever you're at, make sure to tag us and tag Crypto Mondays. And we really appreciate if you take uh, if you take pictures and then share the love with the other Crypto Mondays people, and welcome to our Crypto Mondays community of 32,000 members in 40 different countries. Welcome, everyone, and especially welcome to the KISS NFT holders tonight. Who's a KISS NFT holder? All right. Well, welcome. All right. Well, welcome to those people. And if you want to buy a KISS NFT, there's actually a machine right out there. They, I was just in London. We can talk about this. There was an NFT vending machine that you could buy, uh, an NFT from a vending machine, just like you buy a soda or a Red Bull, um, but you could buy an NFT from the vending machine. They're a little bit more sophisticated here at the Belvedere. They've got a beautiful kiosk with a computer system that you can buy your uh, NFT, which is going to be worth a million dollars in a couple of weeks. <laughs> we'll, discuss <laughs> we'll discuss that. Uh, in just a minute. So, shall I invite? Uh, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, at the end here, stay tuned, stay for the full time because there will be a game, and one person will walk away with a, the Kiss NFT. Shall I invite up our guests tonight and quit talking? All right, I'd like to invite up stage. Please give a warm welcome to Wolfgang Bergman, CFO of Belvedere Museum. Jürgen Herzl, Jürgen Herzl, CEO of RTQ. Okay, and yeah, sit, uh, sit this, uh, yeah, sit here. Wherever you like. Uh, and uh, hit the button. Turn on the mic, and you want to hit the button again to turn off the mic. Okay, so that's on. All right, so here we go. We're doing it. Now, if you want to ask questions, uh, then please feel free to uh, have a drink or kind of communicate with our guests uh, afterwards. Uh, but we we would reserve questions to the end because our time is limited, and of course, we've got um, three uh, law lawyers here afterwards, uh, two law firm partners, and you know they're always on billable time, so uh, <laughs> every minute counts. <laughs> okay, great. All right, guys, I saw, I got to see Wolfgang Bergman for a minute uh, in London at NFT London, which is a major event, uh, but uh, we miss each other, of course. I mean, I think Jürgen was uh, partying uh, maybe too hard, but he looks to be refreshed today. How was, how was London for both of you? Go ahead. Um, did you go through me? Uh, no, no, no. Maybe you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, London NFT was great. Um, I had the pleasure to be in, in New York for the NYC, um, NYC NFT event in June also. Um, in the end of the day, I believe it's quite important for such young project as RDQ to reach out to as many people as possible, especially with events um, such as London NFT. This is a great opportunity. We talked to a couple of um, Possible investors with other companies doing um, also great stuff. So I believe such events are 
really important to increase the knowledge about the space to learn about what the other people are doing in the space. And therefore, I guess it was um, very important for me, but also for RDQ to be, to be part of the, the level um, NFTI. Sounds like he's suggesting a similar big conference, NFT conference in Vienna, doesn't it? <laughs> that would be a great thing. Yeah, let's think about that. So, um, uh, <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> okay, I think we can get a promise tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I did not inherit. How was London for you? Uh, yeah, very impressive. Uh, and and for me, uh, it's very interesting because it's a very for an old-fashioned institution like the Belvedere. It's a, a new culture, and it's a high-speed uh, community. Um, and I think we can learn from each other uh, because we have a long-term perspective. And, 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 and these initiatives have a very short, uh, high-speed perspective. And I think both perspectives are very necessary to bring uh, to, to overcome with new building. Well, that's a very interesting, uh, a very interesting segue. I can just get rid of the questions here, and we can talk the, 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 about the difference between long term and short term, especially in investments in relation to art. Uh, and oh, forgive me, we're speaking in English. We're kind of out of Deutsch reden, natürlich, aber um, English is uh, better for uns uh, internationale uh, manga audience. Uh, and uh, sometimes, uh, as a New Yorker, I tend to talk very fast. So, Guys, can we please give George a clap for of course, perfect German? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but so I just realized that I have to talk a little bit slower um, for the people not from New York. You know, there's some people from Kansas and things like that. <laughs> but the Austrians have great German. So give yourself a, a round of applause for your great English. <laughs> okay, now. All right, so we know that a long-term and short-term perspective is um, core to what the Belvedere decided to do with the KISS, obviously one of the most famous um, and interesting paintings in the world. Um, we're going to show a video, uh, a really cool promo video in a second here about that, so everybody knows what the project is. Of course, most of you do, but especially for our streaming audience, they might not have heard of it. Um, but before we get to that, you said that, you know, it, you know, the community, the connections, that R2Q had made this project. People know what the KISS is. People know, should know what the Belvedere is. Oh, by the way, a few of you are going to get free tickets too to the Belvedere. Uh, that's going to be part of our game. So stay on for that. But tell us about R2Q. What is R to Q? What does it mean, investment capital in relation to art? So we have founded R to Q almost um, a year ago. We more or less have three different departments uh, where we're very hard working on. Um, the first department is our gallery in Vienna, Parkenschmerz Bieberstraße, which has uh, recently moved to a new location. It's, uh, it's going to be the first um, gallery dedicated to digital, digital art only. Um, where we gonna exhibit very um, young digital art positions, um, mainly focusing on Austrian artists. However, um, with the blockchain technology, with digital art, we're also possible to have um, different exhibition on various locations at the same time. Um, therefore, I'm also quite proud of our latest project. We're gonna have an exhibition by the end of November, beginning of December, where we basically gonna show Natalie Gieno, she's uh, um, Catholic um, artist from Miami, together with one of our partners in Miami, yes, Jacob, he, he's running a gallery in Miami. So we're going to show Natalie Vienna at the same time here in Vienna and in Miami. Um, by doing so with digital art, it's quite an easy task. Um, and that's also where we think the future is. So we truly believe that um, we can have in future exhibition, digital art exhibition, um, on various locations, combining the communities together. Second thing we do is um, we're working together with traditional art institutions, museums such as the Belvedere, to bridge the gap between traditional art and the web space. So um, 
more or less we're trying to get those traditional or help those traditional institutions to enter their way into the web three space. And the third thing is um, we just um, deployed our token recently. Um, it's the RDQ token on, on various exchanges. And the RDQ token represents the whole digital art collection that we are trying to build up for our token holders. You can compare it um, to, a, let's say, to an ETF, but completely different as it is in the Web3 space, but that's what the RDQ token is. So this three department um, altogether is Wow, that sounds like a uh, global, what we call a unicorn coming up, doesn't it? I mean, with ETFs. Yeah, let's see. Let's I mean, see. Let's see. So you can buy the tokens on uh, different exchanges? Yeah, so far we are, um, you can buy them on, on Uniswap, on Bitmark, um, and Maxi. Um, we are in negotiation with um, two of the tier one um, exchanges. But let's see. It's not fixed yet. Right. Um, we're working hard on it. But yeah. So you look, so r q is holistic. They have a holistic perspective on art. So you help institutions, you help in, uh, individual artists, and then you also are bridging that gap between the traditional real life art and the digital, giving, creating digital experiences in the real world through galleries. Like in my hometown, Miami, and which are going to be, at, I assume, Art Basel and Bit Basel. All right, we're going to have Crypto Mondays on a yacht uh, over there in Miami for that. So uh, make sure that you uh, say that you were a speaker at Crypto Mondays so that you can, uh, and that you know Dr. Josh, so that you can uh, get in. If anybody is going to be in Malta, we're going to be at AIBC next week in Malta, and then uh, the following week at uh, Block Expo in Berlin. So I've got a huge travel schedule and um, me and you are gonna, we didn't get a chance to party in London, but maybe we can in uh, Miami. <laughs> <laughs> and it, isn't it great? So Arta Q is doing some amazing stuff here. Is anybody in the audience an, uh, an artist, up and coming artist? A few, a couple people, okay, great. We're gonna have a Crypto Mondays in the next couple months all for new artists okay now i mean and it's because i was in a gallery the other day that uh it's called the heart of vienna a new gallery and it's focused on people that were unacademically trained you know artists from a lot of different countries around europe and they didn't know about how to get their art as nfts or this new market so we're going to expand that and support that but not only do we expand and support the new artists just like art q does but also the old artist from a hundred years ago <laughs> whose art is priceless. And I'm gonna show you all the Belvedere video real quick so we everybody make sure everybody's on the same page. And then we're gonna ask a few um, of the most interesting questions uh, next. So take a look. It worked in the trial. We'll do it the old fashioned way. For the first time in the history of arms. Okay. It was there. Right, we'll do it this way. It's okay. For the first time in the history of arms, the world famous masterpiece, The Kiss by Gustav Klimt, is joining the metaverse NFT space, and a part of it could be yours. Belvedere Museum and Arte Q are presenting the new era of art collection, turning Gustav Klimt's masterpiece into non-fungible tokens known as NFTs. 
The KISS NFT drop on Valentine's Day 2022 is your chance to own a limited edition piece of the digitalized masterpiece and become part of the metaverse history. Using state-of-the-art technology, Belvedere Museum and RKQ converted perfect digital editions of Gustav Klimt's world-famous masterpiece, bringing out detail invisible to the naked eye in each individual NFT. The digital artwork is broken down into 10,000 tiles, each having its distinctive coordinates and dedicated numbers. The tiles will be minted one by one, and each unique piece be randomly assigned as exclusive NFTs. Every token is imprinted with a number and will provide a digitalized certificate, which highlights the owned piece of the digitalized clipped masterpiece. As a gesture of love, or to simply add a personal touch, buyers can add a dedication to the NFT and have the possibility to eternalize their KISS NFT forever. Don't miss out to pre-register for the drop. Simply join our whitelist and get the chance to be a future owner. Are you ready to be part of a revolutionary masterpiece NFT? All right. Great. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to know who your oh I don't even need this, do I? <laughs> I'd love to know who you're marketing and advertising people for. That I loved how those tiles came came apart and went out and then they came back in. That kind of expresses the nature of the project, doesn't it, Wolfka? I didn't catch this last sentence. Oh, it's the way that the video. Um, make sure your mic's on. The way that the video showed the original artwork being broken into small tiles and spread out into the public expresses what you envisioned and what Belvedere envisioned about the project. Can you tell me how this happened in Vienna? And what was your thinking behind it to do this, especially at a time when nobody even knew what an NFT was using such a nascent new technology? Tell us about how this came about. I think most of the people in Austria didn't know um, uh, what it is. Um, they only knew that NFT are three letters of the alphabet uh, uh, before we started uh, with, with the project. And I think it was also an, educational uh, um, or thing we did um, uh, by this project and, and we are convinced that it is a this is a, a, a groundbreaking breaking technology uh, which will change uh, uh, our behavior will change the world a little bit like uh, the smartphone changed everything uh, and we, we at the moment we, we cannot imagine what, what what it will be in the future for us it's the first step into the metaverse and in fact nobody knows at the moment what a museum in the metaverse will be we have to think about it we have to develop it and we want to be one of the first museums uh, reaching it and and so for us the the, the, the nft project um uh, we look for a, a creatively and a playfully way to bring people in contact uh, with uh, the artwork. We don't sell the artwork, it would be too cheap, uh, but we sell uh, a collectible. Um, for us as a museum is also uh, important to highlight and to stress that we Sell a collective because we are not an investment fund or anything else. Uh, we sell uh, the relationship, a new relationship uh, to the kiss and to the artwork. And in fact, uh, I meet people uh, 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 and we reach people that didn't know uh, who is those stuff linked and who is the case before. I, I couldn't imagine as the director of the building there that any person in the world doesn't know uh, who that guy is, uh, but uh, a lot of people do not know. And so it's a kind of, 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 of educational task to use all the, the new ways to reach uh, the, the people and to Get in contact with the artwork. Go ahead. I also believe that 
Cool Fashion Project is a perfect way to reach out, especially to a younger audience. Um, I was really impressed. My, my, my cousin is 17 years old. She's from, also from Graz, um, as I am. And um, after we launched the project, um, a week uh, later on, she told me, um, I'm going to come to Vienna to visit the Belvedere. Um, I really like how innovative the, the museum is, and therefore I can visit this also to see the different screens and, and the, the kiss in original. And um, this is also something that in all the discussion about the project is somehow um, underestimated. Um, as the, as Wolfgang also mentioned, it is truly a reach out to a younger audience to get them um, in connection again with the museum and also with art in general. Okay, so I think that's a really interesting point. And as a matter of fact, I might have met your youngest kiss NFT holder tonight. She was only 17 years old. And as a matter of fact, it's exactly what you said. By connecting this with the youth, then you pull them into the history, the traditions, and the culture. And not only that, she is here with her dad. She was here with her dad. So you were also having a connection between the generations and the connection at home uh, through something that's beautiful, wonderful, and inspiring. So I think that this is uh, a really important point that a lot of people either misunderstand or underestimate about the value of NFTs and, and what's happening. Because most people think of NFTs as an as a art investment of how some guy named Beeple made $69 million on one of his works. And I can't wait to hear from our law firm the panel coming up next about that uh, topic. But let's look at that value too, because obviously the kiss is not a monkey picture, is it? It's not a board eight. It's something very different. Tell us why this is valuable. Why should I why should people find this valuable as an investment if they're not into it like many of you are for the art, of course? Well, I, I don't have to talk about investment. That's not the role uh, of a museum. But um, uh, what I can stress or highlight is the question, is that only a hype? Uh, will, will it be forgotten tomorrow? Uh, and there we can see as museum and as the kids, uh, we are showing the kids um, uh, uh, in the museum uh, for more than 100 of years. And we will show the kids in a, uh, for many hundreds of years if the climate doesn't collapse. Um, we will show, and up from this mo moment, uh, this collection will accompany the case uh, also for the next hundreds of years. So I was sometimes surprised. Uh, I told about the, 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 the fast moving uh, community to be asked, why are you not sold out within some minutes? And I answered, well, for me as a museum, it doesn't matter if I'm sold out now, next year, or within five years because we will exist the next hundreds of years. So this is the long-term perspective uh, that we have, and, and, and which is a long-time perspective for a collectible. I see, okay. So it's like Gustav Mahler said, you know, everything that happens in the world happens 50 years later in Vienna. So, <laughs> so board apes will be worth nothing in 50 years, and Yet, and but this uh, uh, will go on for the long term. So it's both a short term and a long term perspective. The short term value, as you said, might be something that people don't even pay attention to the connection that you have with the art. And then the long term value could actually be fi a financial investment um, or an investment in culture um, that you're making because it's. And uh, what I want to stress is you support the museum. If you buy an NFT uh, and all the, uh, the the scientific work, all the educational work we do, uh, we need money for, and we as museum we earn 
70% of our budget we have to earn by ourselves. It's not public finance. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, very important uh, uh, institution uh, needs funds. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, you know, in researching for uh, these interviews, I, I talked to consultants that were consulting in Belvedere and other uh, museums in Europe and in the United States, and they're much more privately funded in the United States, and there has been subsidies here. I didn't know it was 70% uh, privately funded, so that's actually a lot. So who bought an NFT, a KISS NFT, to, for the purpose of supporting the museum? and culture and history. Oh, wow. OK, several of you. Let's give those people a round of applause for supporting Austria and history. I'm sorry, did you want to add to that about the investment? Um, well, I'm on the same pitch with Walker. In the end of the day, we did put a short, short time investment, obviously, with our utility program, the dedication, which is quite a nice thing, I guess. Um, then also the opportunity to have to go to the museum to visit the museum um, would be a lot um, as the NFT is connected with the with an annual ticket for the Belvedere Museum and obviously now we're also starting to think about the truly think long time as um, we are entering a lot of different collaboration whether with um, institutions galleries um, around the world to um, find partners sharing um, the values of the KISS project and also um, trying to reach out to different communities and in the end of the day to sell even more um, the KISS. Fantastic. All right. So let's just for those people, um, I'm sorry, uh, there might be some people waiting outside. For you gentlemen at the door, could you make sure, and could you let anybody in that might be waiting outside? Would that be okay? That would be okay. Thanks. That's okay for everyone. Yeah. We want to ensure that everyone participates. I keep getting all these calls, and so thank God it's on silent. Uh, so uh, just about that. So just about what the NFT is. We, you said that you don't own the kiss. So we own a digital representation of the kiss that's one of a kind, or one, and that is actually one part of it. So you own that part that cannot be officially represented again. Okay, and and can I put it up on my wall? And each is unique, and each is an icon, a new icon itself. If you look at this, okay, article, yeah, number three thousand five hundred twenty-one. It's a new picture. And, and and you have the right to, to, to use it for your own or for every product you might produce with. Um, I want to add, this was a very um, important thing also for Wolfram, but also for RDQ, um, to stress out that all our the case holders have all the rights uh, to the signal card. Therefore, you can obviously hang it on your wall. You can print it on your T-shirts. Um, we even um, very soon launching um, or adding a, a additional feature to our um, on our homepage, where we give um, the kiss holders the opportunity to um, connect their signal tiles with different products that the well their shop offer. So therefore, we truly connect um, our signal tiles and the T-kisses with um, products that you can then play on, wear or use in your um, everyday life. Great, okay, and so- um, You also could use it commercially, so if you make your own product line with your NFT, do it. So in the end of the day, the, the single um, tile holders, the single kiss holders have all the IPs um, that comes along um, with, so in, in any way that you can imagine. Oh, fantastic. And then there's the other the, the other benefit of being a VIP at Crypto Mondays Vienna. <laughs> well, I'm a benefit, I guess. And getting the drinks. And not only that, the Belvedere Museum, on that note, has uh, agreed to give away, um, we'll have two giveaways tonight, one for the VIPs and KISS holders, and one for the general audience, okay? 
um, the general audience will um, be able to receive uh, tickets to the Belvedere, um, courtesy of the Belvedere, and uh, one uh, VIP uh, or existing ticket holder, like you mentioned, the advantages. The advantages is of Board Apes, for example, and is that you're part of this club and you can get into certain events and you can go meet Madonna and whatever you want um, or whoever has these, these, these NFTs. Uh, you can have that. Another one they mentioned is a dedication. Another mention they mentioned the long-term value. They mentioned the short-term value, which is called flipping. Now, obviously, flipping isn't going very well right now in NFTs in general, <laughs> but it comes and it goes like markets do. And if you're afraid of risk and you don't want to take risk, I would definitely say don't get into crypto and don't get into NFTs. But if you want to embrace volatility, you want to embrace uh, 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 change and, and take those risks and you can invest in some great artwork, support the museum, support the culture, even give a dedication to uh, your loved one and have this really cool NFT that you can put on a t-shirt and then when you meet another NFT holder that's a KISS NFT holder, you have some kind of bond together, don't you? And so this is what can be done not only with the KISS, but what Arctic Q is doing and other people are doing with new artists, with other traditional artists, with different forms of art, digital art. So we have a whole new world with NFTs, it seems. And go ahead, uh, let's jump in. And then after that, we will get to the first uh, prize drawing, which is our KISS NFT for one of the um, uh, pri uh, VIPs and then go to the legal panel. But go ahead, let's say last thoughts. Yeah, um, last thought maybe on the, on the wording, um, NFT art. Um, we, also, as RDQ believe, also if you if you take into account the art um, history um, evaluation, where everything basically started with cave paintings, later on we have stone sculptures. Um, the old masters painted the beautiful pieces of wood. Within the 19th century, we seen canvas, and we as RDQ truly believe that the time for digital art is now. Um, I'm not a very big fan of the wording and the T art because in the end of the day, it's digital art. Um, saved on the chain, mm -hmm. on an NFT, or as an NFT. Um, but we truly believe that this technology somehow helps young artists um, to globally um, sell their digital art pieces. So my background is um, IT, IT law, and back in my primary life, I did um, I've done many contracts for galleries, museums, where we basically sold digital art pieces. Um, at this time, we saved digital art on USB sticks, CD-ROMs, some are ridiculous. And now, um, with this technology, the truly value is that a young physician working in the digital art field can now sell their pieces or monetize their pieces um, globally within seconds. And even as I mentioned, the possibility to have art exhibitions in Vienna or in Miami, whatever, it doesn't matter where, at the same time, to show the same pieces. And as soon as you buy one piece, um, for instance, through, QR, through a QR code where you get on the landing page admitted, um, boom, then it's gone in Vienna as it is sold. And at the same time, it's gone in, in Deutschburg, Frankfurt, Miami. So this is something that I believe that's where the future in art also lies. And we're going to see within the next um, five, 10 years um, a lot of a, a big evolution in the industry. That's fantastic. And then, uh, so it's an opportunity for the next, next Gustav Klimt to be found in the 21st district, uh, you know, hidden in some basement rather than somebody who had all the advantages of his prominence. And we're going to see, a, a, like you said, I don't know about an evolution, but I think more about revolution yeah. in, in our both both i love that and the uh, last thoughts to you sir uh, before we move to this exciting prize draw it's especially, especially it's a revolution for the digital art because for the first time you have a you have a certificate of ownership of a digi digital artwork it's it's groundbreaking it's new and so it's uh, uh, it's one of the first things NFTs did is to, to create a market for, for for digital art. But now there's a movement to use NFTs for several uh, things, um, uh, memberships, programs, ticketing, etc. 
and and uh, we have to be aware that these are different markets because we were confronted with with the, the question what's the utility of this kind of and uh, I have to answer the utility of, of an artwork of an or of a collectible here it's in a collectible because we don't sell the artwork uh, it's to put the, it's the, the collectible itself uh, let's take a, an example from the old world if, if you have the, the blue Mauritius what's the blue what's the utility of the blue Mauritius uh, you can't uh, use it as a stamp anymore uh, uh, the utility is to own it to, to, uh, and to love it uh, and, and that we have to stress because the markets go in a different way and NFT will be used for, for uh, have the ownership of, of houses uh, of uh, motor boats etc right. uh, but this is a connection to an artwork uh, and to, to own it and to love it and that's the utility Love is the answer, isn't it? All right, let's see if our lawyers agree. I want to say thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you very much. Now, um, now I'm going to ask my assistant to come up here, Patrick Kaufman, who's uh, uh, with Block Pit. You might have heard of Block Pit. Anybody hear of that? But she's also one of our uh, coordinators, volunteer coordinators. Uh, Crypto Mondays is volunteer run. Uh, all over the world. And uh, Marcus uh, uh, over do you have that uh, list of um, the people, the, the, the avatars? We're going to go ahead and play that game. Oh, I have both of them. Okay. While she's doing that, while she's going to, she's going to, we're going to have this game. It's going to be super fun. And uh, while, while she's putting in the list of avatars to our spinning wheel that's going to decide the winner of this, uh, the KISS official NFT, I'm going to ask our very special guest. He wasn't originally on the time plan, but he agreed to come tonight to talk for a few minutes um, about the Crypto Academy, which has been around for a long time. Um, he's very well known. He's been in crypto for since, what, 2012, 2011? 2000. Close enough. Two th since 2013, um, he's a partner at well, Wolf Dice uh, Law Firm, one of uh, Central Europe's uh, biggest uh, law firms uh, in the area of tax. He's an expert uh, in all areas of crypto. He's going to talk just for a, a couple minutes about uh, his crypto academy while we set up. This is uh, uh, Nicholas Schmidt from Wolf Dice uh, Law Firm. Uh, please say, uh, uh, give a, a round of applause. <laughs> Does it work? Okay, super. So, Josh, uh, thank you very much. Also, to Angelica. I cannot see you. I now know why you're wearing sunglasses. I cannot see anybody here. So, um, yeah, uh, I am I'm going to start with a, a short story. Uh, a few months ago, the one of the two heads of the Austrian Financial Markets Authority. Uh, was interviewed by an Austin newspaper, and he said 80% of all crypto transactions are scammy. And uh, it was a few weeks ago that a very, uh, very well-known blockchain analysis company, uh, a company which does uh, blockchain forensics, it's called Chainalysis, you might have heard it, they did a, they did a report and they said 0.15% of all transactions have a Fortunate background. So, which is true? Is it the 80% of the financial, of the markets authority, of the regulator, or is it 0.15% of this really data and science based uh, research company? Well, no surprise, it's the latter. And I would say education in this crypto area is super important. And I myself have been like putting in a lot of time to educate myself. I put in definitely more than 10,000 hours, the mythical 10,000 hours you need to really learn something since 2013, as George mentioned earlier. And uh, I have been, uh, I started this educational initiative, it's called the Bortlice Crypto Academy, and I have uh, basically educated more than a thousand lawyers in the last years on this. 
So it's a it's a twenty hour course where you uh, basically learn everything uh, you need to know about crypto. So what do I do? Uh, I mean, we start off obviously with the like the history of Bitcoin, how it started. It's Satoshi Nakamoto, his early friends, his ideas, the paper. Uh, we move into Ethereum. We look at smart contracts. We uh, learn what it means, what you can do with smart contracts. What is the purpose of having computer programs which are unstoppable, which nobody can basically control or stop? Then we look into various applications. We look into ICOs, uh, which is like historic. Josh, are you listening? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, and then we look at uh, stable coins and we look at DeFi. DeFi is probably the most exciting topic. So I really, I really uh, love this uh, this part. Uh, we also look at NFTs, no question about that. And uh, a very strong, uh, sort of a very strong component is definitely uh, the NFT part. And I would say uh, crypto is like super crazy and NFT is the craziest of the craziest. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I really love that. Uh, and uh, we do a lot of, uh, we look into investing uh, in crypto. I don't give financial advice, obviously, as a lawyer, but uh, sort of I give an overview of what's out there. And uh, so lots and lots of, of topics. So if you're interested, if you're a newbie, if you have no idea, then you definitely should start. I mean, basically, today was the start of the Crypto Academy of this cohort. Uh, you can still join. If you are already an old hand in, in crypto, you might still join. There are lots of things that people who have a lot of experience in crypto learned in the course. And uh, the I'm nearly finished. Go ahead. Yeah. I, as long as you give some non-financial advice that sounds like financial advice, I'm listening. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, you know the trick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, uh, I mean, which is like really super is there are lots of people doing all sorts of courses and at the end of the day, you're just on a course and you cannot really show what, what you learn. And uh, uh, in this course, I'm actually handing out an NFT and if you have the NFT, you can, if you go to Planet DAO, which is a very well-known uh, DAO in the world of uh, digital asset advising, and uh, you can take an exam. You get uh, this title, it's called Certified Digital Asset Advisor. Uh, there are quite a number of people doing that already. Uh, and it definitely helps you to level up. It definitely helps you to, to stand out of the crowd. So just to recap, Nicholas Schmidt is my name and I was speaking about the Crypt Academy. The Wolf Dice Crypt Academy. I'm a lawyer with Wolf Dice and Josh. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. And sir, uh, just a second. Uh, I, I have put the, I put the link up there for the Crypto Academy. It did start today, unfortunately, but you can get, catch the next round if you want an in-depth uh, an in-depth jump with a real expert in crypto. Um, if you can hang around for another 15 minutes, I'd love to have you up on stage with our, our next guest as a panel because we have banking and finance, we have criminal law, how to avoid being a criminal, and I'd love to have a person who knows a little bit about tax. Too. Would you stay up with us all day? Yes, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I'd like to, on that on that note to also uh, invite up our other uh, attorneys. I have a partner at CMS Law Firm, uh, which is also one of uh, Vienna's and the uh, Eastern uh, Mid, uh, Central Europe's uh, most well-known uh, law firms. A partner in uh, and an expert. Uh, in finance, uh, in business, uh, I would like to welcome up uh, Stefan Paulmeyer. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. And then, uh, and then uh, last but not least, I'd like to in, invite, obviously, uh, some of the reason that uh, some of the people came here was to learn about how to avoid getting into uh, scams. Because um, has anybody been uh, scammed before a crypto? Yeah, me. I lost six Bitcoin. Okay, good. Yeah, a couple people. It, they say you're not really into crypto, and you, maybe Nicholas could agree. You're not really into crypto until you've been scammed. I agree. He agrees. Okay, good. Well, if he agrees, it must be true. All right. And he still didn't give us the financial advice, but maybe we can pull it out. Okay. So, and but last but not least, not only how to avoid scams, how to avoid getting involved in one. Right? 
Because the last thing you want to do, especially if you have a reputation like many of our VIPs here um, are <laughs> real <laughs> VIPs, uh, and uh, they want to avoid either reputation being tarnished, they want to avoid uh, their assets uh, being seized, or uh, the, the authorities looking into uh, their finances um, as well, uh, because it, uh, they're legitimate business people, and a lot of uh, people that they might be involved with may be involved down the road. So um, I'm very, very excited to not only have the typical lawyers that people think of when they think of crypto, which is how can I avoid taxes and um, you know what about the finance, financial aspects. But I'm very happy to um, invite Dr. Angela Katsatur to the stage as well, who's a criminal lawyer, also at the Wolf Guys Law Firm. Please give her a well, well, warm welcome. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay. So how you uh before we get this, we're gonna we're gonna give away the NFT. Um so um it'll be very exciting. But when we get started, um you just push the button, turn on, push the button, turn on. No light, then it's fine. Light? Okay. All right, so now we have let's close this. No? Sorry, Our, we don't have any technical stack here. Um, do we have Daniel here? Yeah. Hi, I'm just trying to show the the this screen, please. Sorry about that. I'm a. Yeah, I know. All that doesn't things. I'm telling you, this was working earlier. <laughs> it almost works in the test run, right? Just a second here. Okay, this is how the game worked. Everybody who had a KISS NFT or bought a VIP ticket uh, for each ticket, it included not only the drinks, and there's some food out there as well, and also I've ordered a little bit more food for everyone else, so everyone feel free to enjoy that, all right? It's on me. Uh, but uh, we also have this really cool game. If we, has anybody seen Wheel of Names? It's a free website, and you can play a game in here where you put in a name and you spin the wheel. And we have, um, obviously, our lovely assistant to spin the wheel. It's random, and so whatever you name, you put in there. Now, every single person that had the NFT, uh, you know, NFTs are the big things, avatars, right? An avatar. What's it called? PFP. Go for picture. Right? And so um, avatars is a big deal in NFTs. Everybody has an avatar and a, a name. So we have some of the names of famous people here. We have Nefertiti, Da Vinci. Who else do we have? Satoshi. Oh, man. Oh, who's Satoshi? <laughs> I thought I had him on in France, in Paris, here in Waza a couple months ago. Uh, and crypto monies. We got Picasso, Andrew Tate. We got Falco. All right, uh, all right. Uh, we have other Falco. Oh no, that's different. Cinderella, of course, is here. Bambi, you know, we have <laughs> so all of these people are real names, real holders of the NFT, and one of them is going to win a second NFT. All right, so this is what you're going to do. Who? My eyes are there. My eyes are. Okay. Uh, all right. We, we we have two more. We have two more people that have uh, NFTs. All right. Uh, uh, go down just a second. Ask them what they're going to Are you sure? Josh, are you running your own scam here? <laughs> just invest, just invest, and don't worry about it. I'll write you in a month. Okay, <laughs> I'll write you in a month uh, from Turks and Caicos. <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> we'll be right back. But 
ba basically, we will get those names. Um, and obviously, you know, you may or may not know who this person is if they win. But I can assure you that I'm not one of those names. Okay? So that's what I can assure you. I don't have a KISS NFT, um, unfortunately. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> Why do I need to get the kiss NFT? Uh, because I'm waiting for the price to drop a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 I think no, uh, because you haven't offered me one. That's why. I mean, you, I thought you were going to give me a dedication, you know, but um, unfortunately, you know, we uh, are still struggling in our our relationship. But <laughs> no, it's exciting actually, um, and we have we have a. We have 20 people here, so uh, we're 21 here, and these names, everyone has an equal opportunity here, okay? And so I won't ask you to come up to the stage uh, if you don't want to, the winner, but um, if you are the winner, then and you would like to come up to the stage and shake hands with uh, the uh, CFO of the Belvedere, Wolfgang Bergman, then that would be a historic moment uh, in both art and uh, NFT history. Um, just one second here. Our assistant is making sure that everything is okay. Oh God, we have Cinderella already. Who do we have now? <laughs> Who's it gonna be? What's missing? Don't say God. And it can't be Clint. Clint can't have his own NFT. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? Curvis. Oh, yeah, Curvis. He didn't have pumpkin. Don? Yeah, yeah. Don. Okay. I believe that's everyone. Now, if, 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 so we, as, uh, I can't believe we had, we missed pumpkin. I apologize to pumpkin about that. It was just Halloween as well. So, are we ready? For the big winner, ready? She's going to press enter, or sh or shall we have Berg? Or shall we have? Shall we have uh, Wolfgang? Would you like? No, it's okay. Our lovely assistant picture is going to spin. You're going to spin, yeah, and you just hit, you just the spin or control enter, or you or you okay. Ready? Here we go. Just just uh, hit this. And the winner is Come up and claim your NFT and shake hands with the director of the building and the innovator of this amazing project. Great, thank you. And also, by the way, thank you so much. Awesome. Guys, you are the official winner of the second. NFT worth a million dollars. Congratulations, mate. Okay, you'll be in touch, okay? Now, uh, for all VIPs and people that were the KISS holders, we have a special goodie back. So when you uh, exit, to, you can go to the bar and um, ask for your goodie back as well from uh, from us in the Belvedere in RTQ. So uh, thank you very much for that fun game. And we'll have another one of those fun games. Just by numbers, it'll be uh, much more simple um, after our wonderful panel. Thank you very much to Petra for assisting for having our work here. All right, now let's get right to the fun. Because this is really what everybody came for, right? By the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have my I have my list of very hard, complicated questions that I have no idea even how to ask these questions. All right, let's let, let's start with the, no, the, no. This is going to be fun. These guys are really, really good. You know how much you know the you, the VIP tickets and the uh, uh, not only the VIP tickets and all of the uh, Kiss NFTs combined are probably less money than the billable hours that we have right here on our stage. <laughs> because these are some really top lawyers of, uh, uh, that we have uh, here. So I'm very, very happy to have you all on stage. Um, let's start with the easy question. If I buy crypto assets, assets, which includes crypto, NFTs, any of those things that run by crypto, what do I need to consider regarding taxes? 
Let's, let's start with the oh my god. Issue. Go ahead. Well, yeah, okay. The, the important thing is that um, I mean if you if you buy an NFT and you sell it, that you have to watch out whether you hold it for a year or less. Uh, I'm speaking about the Austin legal system, the Austin tax system, not about other countries' tax systems. But in Austria, you can you can basically sell your NFT with a gain if you have held it for at least a year. So that is the that is the the, the most important rule. Okay, so you have a year, and then after yes. after a year, it's non-taxed. Yeah, I mean, in, in many countries, you have a distinction between short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. Short-term capital gains are often tax at higher rates, uh, and long-term capital gains at lower rates. In Austria, it's similar. If you, you have a short-term capital gain, it's, it's taxable. If you have a long-term gain, it's tax exempt. I actually uh, uh, published this 720-page book on the taxation of crypto assets. So it's really a brick. Uh, it's, it's a book which uh, it covers 40 countries. And uh, the thing is that uh, tax is very sort of inadequate. The tax systems are very unsophisticated in, in relation to crypto. Uh, the, the authorities mostly have no idea about crypto. The, the laws have not been adapted uh, towards crypto. So it's, there's a real mess. Yeah? In Austria, things are a bit better. We had a, a crypto tax reform. And it changed a lot of things, but in the area of NFTs that we are probably mostly concerned here with, uh, nothing really has changed. So you still have this one year holding period. So if I buy a, the KISS NFT or I own one and I dedicate it to somebody and they hold it for a year and then they decide to sell it, um, then they can't be taxed on that. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, uh, excellent. All right. Well, that that okay. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> no, in, 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 in relation to that, uh, would you like to chime in on that? Uh, uh, what about NFTs? So, so we talked about NFTs um, as digital assets, and Jorgen Potzel was up here talking about this wonderful revolution that we're having with digital only assets. If it's tied to a physical asset, like, for example, the KISS or a house or something like that. Um, what, what are the implications uh, there? And so if it's a painting, um, is ownership of the physical asset transferred together with the token representing the NFT? So if I do sell my KISS NFT, um, Mr. Palmer, um, could you? Uh, I mean, currently we don't have any specialized civil law rules dealing with tokens or uh, NFTs. So what we need to do is we need to work with the existing legal framework, and we have to work with it in regards of those new assets. And with an NFT, it's very much how it's structured. You can have an NFT that only has some digital art incorporated into it. Uh, then it's probably not so much an issue as if you're trying with the token with the NFT to reference really to a physical asset. For instance, the painting or a glass of water or whatever. Because the civil law doesn't really recognize that it is a uniform act. So you have to always to distinguish between transferring the token and then transferring the asset that is referenced with the token. And unfortunately at the moment, if you want to transfer uh, uh, in-rem rights, uh, being ownership, uh, in the physical asset, you still need to adhere to the civil law uh, transfer acts applicable to the physical asset, which is in most cases handing over. Or in case of real estate, you still need to go to the land registry and have the registration done. So it's very uh, impractical at the moment to have an NFT that is really tied to a physical asset. Okay, okay. Do you think that, do you see that? Um... I mean, that's really important. Uh, and do you see that changing um, in the near future in Austria? I know that some uh, countries are already um, adapting the laws in that regard. Do you see that changing anytime soon here? I'm not that positive. I'm looking at the, at the legislature. To be honest, uh, we have some uh, uh, movement here in Austria with regard to crypto assets. We had the Fixation Act, which probably is some a betterment. But for those poor civil law aspects, I don't see anything happening. Okay, so in that case, well, okay, so it's a bit slower. So uh, we, in that case, uh, in the case of the KISS NFT, it's long-term value, as uh, Mr. Bergman said, but in the case of law, <laughs> the changes will happen uh, a bit later than uh, some other places like 
uh, the UK, for example, where I know that um, they're uh, having they have NFTs even as court subpoenas and things like that. I mean, but at the moment, you just need to structure it right because you still can have reference to a painting, and you can even have coins as the painting hang in the museum, and you sell NFTs that are purporting to transfer ownership, and then you can structure it with the with the documentation, and you could make an instruction of ownership to the museum, so the museum is holding it for the token holders, which would work on those consumer law. But the problem is if one of the co-owners then wants to liquidate it, then it gets really messy. Okay, so what rights do I have as an owner of an NFT? Let's get to that right now. <laughs> what what can I do with it? What rights do I have? And anybody can answer this. If you'd like to continue, go ahead. I mean, essentially, it, it depends on what or rights the issuer will grant you. Okay, so that's that's stipulated when you buy the NFT. So if there's multiple owners, the uh, the, the rights can be uh, given or shared um, and identified from the beginning. Okay, is that is that what you're saying? That is exactly what I say because uh, it really depends on what you want to give the holder. If it's an intellectual property right, then it's mostly IP law. Maybe uh, uh, Angelic is more to uh, IP law because I'm not an IP lawyer. I'm banking finance, uh, so it depends on how you structure it and how you design it. Okay, I've heard that a couple times. It depends on how you structure and how you design it. So your advice would be to anyone thinking to purchase an NFT or transfer ownership of an existing NFT that they have, whether it's individual or multiple ownership, to look at how it's structured or to ask their attorney, hopefully from CMS law firm, to... <laughs> you know, as Americans, we, we plug up. People, uh, so uh, to uh, uh, to identify how is it structured and what are the implications if I sell this or if multiple people own it. Now, uh, Angelica, you're part of a IP IT team at Wolf Dice. Uh, is everything he we're saying makes sense so far? What about rights? What do people have as far as rights? Anything further? Not really. I'm, I'm part of the IP. Can you can you can you turn on? Just hit the button. I'm part of the IT team there for considering how to turn the microphone. <laughs> IT, IP, IP is intellectual property. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm a technologist and couldn't even get the <laughs> PowerPoint to work. It's not okay. Okay. Yeah. And more, my focus is IT and criminal law. So, so IP, everything sounds very logical to me. <laughs> Okay, it, it's not only logical, but it, uh, I mean, it, it makes sense when you think about this kind of scams that could happen, right? Like uh, uh, when you think about the rug pulls or you think about the wash trading or something like that. Um, how do I protect myself? Uh, uh, and what are the typical uh, scams that will happen? What can I, what, what should I look out for when I'm thinking to purchase an NFT or crypto assets? And then how do I protect myself? But I think the most common threats are scams, right? So many people have been scammed already. It really happens a lot, unfortunately. And uh, the, the problem is that cybercrime is a very lucrative business in general. So uh, scammers, they exploit people's trust by, uh, for example, hacking some person's AA celebrity social media accounts. They pretend to be somebody else and then uh, post a phishing link. So they say, for example, um, people, my fans, uh, go to the link and you will win something, something that I created. Just uh, put your, your access data in, 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 um, there uh, on the website. So people trust that, they trust that it's a legitimate project and um, click on the phishing link that, uh, that imitates a real domain or a real website and then they, they lose all their assets and actually they give the, the scammers their login data. Okay, so get, so basically protecting your data and particularly your private key. Now you can trust me with your private key. Don't worry about it. You just oh. give it to me. <laughs> I was going to say, don't ask anybody your private. Key. Okay, you can leave this, Josh. <laughs> All right, don't don't do, don't even trust me with your private key. But what uh, what else should we not trust people with? I think everything every project seems to do it, it usually is. So if there's a great opportunity, a new campaign, 
then uh, you should be very careful and and uh, like uh, when it's fake websites, you can check the, the link, for example, the URL. So you will have uh, spelling mistakes, for example, or compared to the real domain, it's written uh, slightly different, like two letters instead of one, things like that. So it's just, it, it sounds so simple, right? But it's really important just to pay attention to the details. And uh, yeah, um, it, it really depends also on, on the project. If you have a giveaway, then um, maybe check uh, if it's a social media accounts, then then uh, it's important whether the person has any followers or not, whether you can comment something. Yeah. Everything that feels so weird um, usually is, is there just a strange background to that. So credible sources, for example, I mean, and what they call provenance, especially in NFTs, who has owned that NFT and its background is important. And that's why we know the long-term value is in things like the KISS NFT versus another NFT that can be easily copied. But remember, if you go to buy the KISS and it's Belvedere with two E's at the end, Belvedere E dot com then it's probably not the real thing right but uh uh so you've got to be vigilant and and watch out for those scams now it just moving slightly on to another topic that's really interesting because of course the vice president of circle one of the biggest uh the biggest stable coin is on crypto mondays in new york in a couple hours here uh stable coins um, let's talk about that first. So if, for anybody that doesn't know what a stable coin is, um, uh, maybe one of you would like to just give a quick overview of what a stable coin is. And let's talk about MICA, the regulation, and whether our stable coins are possible. So go ahead. Okay. Do the stable coin fraud. I mean, yeah. basically, uh, you know that crypto is like super volatile. I think go up and down, up and down. And uh, stable coins are basically the best of both worlds. On the one hand, it's crypto, so you can hold it yourself in your wallet, have self sovereign storage, and uh, you can transfer it instantly, like from that from peer to peer. Uh, but on the other hand, stable coins are crypto assets which are pegged, which are linked, which are based on fiat currency. So it's euros or mostly it's dollars uh, on the blockchain. So that is what a stable coin is. And there are three con concept concepts. I mean, you can have fiat collateralized stable coins. So basically it's like a voucher. You can have crypto collateralized stable coins. These are more complicated. I don't have too much time to explain them. And then you have not collateralized stable coins, which are just pure alchemy. Yeah? It's just very complicated and often doesn't work. Uh, so you have uh, these concepts, stable coins are super. I mean, it's like fascinating. It's the basis of DeFi, of decentralized finance, which is basically financial operations on the blockchain. And uh, for DeFi, you need stable coins. So stable coins are linked to something stable. The idea is it's linked to a currency or something like that. And the uh, the one that fell apart, Luna, that had was a lot of people say the cause of the crypto crash or crypto winter that we're in right now. It was backed up on something that was maybe less stable, which was called an algorithmic stable coin. It was based on some mathematics, not on something stable. So basically it's something stable, but well, can there be an art based stable coin? I mean, maybe you'd like to chime in on that. Yeah, maybe let's, uh, because you talked about MICA and maybe let's briefly discuss what MICA is. MICA is shifting markets in uh, crypto assets regulation, which will likely apply uh, as of 2024, or will likely be published uh, early beginning of 2023. Uh, it will create uh, rules for a uh, market in certain crypto assets. It's very important uh, because, for instance, security tokens will not be covered by the MICA, but MICA will be focusing on essentially three types of tokens, which are essence reference tokens, which are e money tokens, and sort of the rest of it, with the most important parts being the utility tokens that many of you know. Uh, the e money tokens are essentially stable coins that reference to a fiat currency. And they are, can be used as means of payment and they would be e-money under the e-money directive and under the e-money law. And then you have asset-backed uh, tokens, which can be backed by all sorts of assets, likely also crypto assets. We don't know it at the moment exactly because there will be accompanying guidelines by the EBA and by the European Central Bank and the ESMA that will specify 
uh, when you talk about art and NFT, uh, a non fungible token and NFT as such does not fall under MICA. But the recitals to the regulation say that uh, if you have uh, an art collection and you have a token that is referencing to an art collection, that might fall under MICA. And maybe to make it a bit more uh, easy for people to understand what an asset backed token is or supposed to be, it's going to be similar to an investment fund. So it's you will have a pool of assets that is in, invested into certain asset classes. And uh, in order to ensure liquidity, there will be requirements that you have daily uh, uh, liquid funds, you have weekly, weekly, uh, weekly liquid funds, and then you can have a certain portion of the asset pool can be invested in other sorts of assets, likely also art and likely also crypto assets. Okay, excellent. All right, so now when not just talking about crypto assets, I mean, we know that crypto assets are what is going to fuel the metaverse. And a lot of people are in companies are jumping into the metaverse. Here's a question. One, how do I protect myself in the metaverse from, uh, from, from criminals, from scams and things like that? Because now we're to, we've jumped from NFTs to the metaverse, but with the, the uh, link together and then are there going to be can we expect new laws can 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 companies say okay i've just invested or people i've just invested all this stuff in this metaverse metaverse company or whatever and then now uh oh here comes this new uh regulation or new law do we need a new legal framework for the virtual world or does the existing one work in in, in austria I would say the existing laws already apply because you, you had many online uh, online trading, for example, or online uh, purchasing, right? Everybody can buy stuff on the internet and also you have cybercrime already. So it, it's really not so different, even though it sounds very new, but it's basically just the, 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 the possibilities are maybe more, but, but the laws still, uh, they can be the same. I think when you, when you ask about protection, that's a very interesting question, of course, because it always depends on um, who you are, whether you are a user or a company, and uh, and, and uh, yeah, what your involvement is, I would say. For example, if you are a company that wants to, to build a metaverse project, and so a metaverse, it's a, I'm not a technician, but as far as I know, it's a web of, uh, of smart contracts. So it's important to have the, to, to, to secure your codes, to have them audited, by a, a, a third party, a, a strong technical team. And, uh, and, and then you can uh, practice and, and, and cut out vulnerabilities, which is, I feel, very essential. If, if you're a user, it depends on what you want to do. Like if you, uh, if you, buy, uh, if you buy something, a, a, something from Nike, for example, uh, as far, or I, I believe that actually the same customer protection laws apply in the metaverse because you, you already have online purchases and, and, and the right to cancel contract after 14 days, things like that if you don't like the product. So so I think in that, in that regard, you're good. What you can never really prevent or you can only be careful are, are uh, again, scams and, and, and rock pulls. But, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, was this, Did you want to add to that? No, I, I, I totally agree with Angelica. I mean, if you do a, a bank robbery in real life and you do it in the metaverse, there's no difference. Yeah. I mean, you don't need special laws for that. Similarly, if you harass or stalk somebody in real life and you do the thing in the metaverse, I mean, you already have the laws in place. Yeah. So I think this is not an area where we need new laws. Okay. Would you agree? Essentially, yes. I'm have to admit that I'm not the biggest fan of the of the metaverse. But I'm honestly saying it will be. Actually, you failed. <laughs> okay, there's your alpha. All right, so uh, all right. See, I told you I would get some financial advice out of them, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, so any more financial advice that you'd like to give? No, I'm joking. All <laughs> uh, right, so I uh, thank you very much. I mean, I think that this has been a fantastic panel. Um, I want to uh, just thank uh, all three of you experts and uh, a round of applause for um, our legal experts panel. Um, yeah. I'm going to give you
The Canadian Legal Services, obviously, um, you know, th these guys are the experts the, uh, in Austria to go to. Um, if you could stay on the stage for a minute, instead of doing, I know everybody wants to get back to drinking and networking. That's what we do at Crypto Mondays. There's no content at Crypto Mondays except enthusiasts and new people to crypto coming together and learning about crypto, DeFi, NFTs, and the whole world, metaverse included, um, whether it's a failure or a success. But we want to have fun. We want to talk. We want to make it light. So that was a serious part. And the final thing we're going to do, we're not going to do uh, another game or something like that for the audience. But we would love to have some pictures of the event. Again, our photographer had to cancel. So this is what I'm going to do. They've agreed to give five tickets. What I want you to do is take a picture. Take a picture either of us out there or people networking or you with your new friend that you met. All right. And the first five people that post up pictures and tag, make sure to tag Crypto Mondays and make sure to tag Belvedere. And I think it's either through LinkedIn um, or uh, Instagram or uh, Twitter, where the first five people that do that will get a ticket. Make sure to tag me in it, though, at the uh, information uh, here. Um, and then, uh, oops, well, at, at the other information that just came off the page. Uh, where did it go? Okay, at Crypto Mondays or Lang High, that's my personal one. So tag that. And then make sure to tag Belvedere as well. All right, Belvedere Museum. Make sure you're getting the Belvedere. It's at Belvedere, um, I believe. Is that correct? It's Belvedere 21, isn't it? Belvedere Museum. Belvedere Museum. Sorry about that. So make sure to tag Belvedere and the first five people that do it. Um, I will basically reach out to you with a, a direct message and ensure that you can get your ticket to the Belvedere Museum. How about that? All right. So make sure to take pictures, make some friends, do some networking. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, coming to the first uh, Crypto Mondays. We're going to have monthly events. Some upcoming ideas that we have are not only uh, things like Block Pit, Block Pit, and Big Panda. We have some uh, experts in all different areas. We're going to kick. We're going to talk about different blockchains like Algorand that people don't know about that are really exciting. Maybe some, a lot of investments, and we're going to get that crypto alpha that you want. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody that's streaming from worldwide. I want to thank you to the audience here. Thank you to uh, both of our panels, and a special thanks to the Belvedere Museum, Wolfgang Bergman, for putting this uh, wonderful uh, kickoff event on. If you uh, would like to uh, follow us, obviously, or email me, if you want to have a request, say, hey, we would really like this topic, and just send me an email at CryptoMondaysGlobal at gmail.com. And if you want to be notified when the next Crypto Mondays is going to happen in Vienna or in any other city around the world where you're at, like I said, 72 cities, then uh, you will see us, find us on uh, Meetup. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. See you outside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>